Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of Someone's Tutorials. That's right, I'm introducing a friend of mine, Aria. All his info is down in the info of this video. So check it out, subscribe, like it, and show him some love, as he also makes some great Reaper tutorials. So I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time. Hello, Kenny. Thanks for having me. Hello, everyone. My name is Arya, and in this video, I wanted to show you some useful actions from the SWS extensions. SWS is an open source extension that you can download for free, and it adds a ton of functionality to Reaper's already impressive set of features. To download it, go to this page linked below, choose the appropriate install for your operating system, and follow the simple instructions to install it. While you're here, also make sure to donate, if you can, to the creators of this incredible extension, who are just regular programming magicians, not employed by Kakos, and as you're about to see, their extension supercharges Reaper for a variety of applications, from recording and mixing, to MIDI editing, podcast editing, and so on. Let's install it together, but for those of you who already have it installed, feel free to skip ahead. Before we install the extension, we should close Reaper, but first I'm gonna go to Options and down here choose Show Reaper Resource Path in Explorer slash Finder. This will open the directory where Reaper is installed. Keep this window handy as we need it in a second. For now, let's close Reaper. After SWS is finished installing, which only takes a few seconds, you will see this window. So go back to Reaper's directory and drag this file to the user plugin folder down here. Once you reopen Reaper, you will notice a new tab available on the top bar called extensions. Now the features you see here each deserve their own tutorial, but today I wanted to focus on a few of the extra actions. So open your action list either by going to actions, action list, or you can press the shortcut shift and forward slash, aka question mark. I can come up here to the filter window and type in SWS and we can see all the actions that have been added to Reaper. Some of these actions are tweaked versions of native Reaper actions and others are completely new actions that are now easily accessible. I'm going to show you a few of my favorites, but of course you should have a browse for yourself as different workflows will benefit from different actions. So let's switch to my custom Reaper install. I have a mixing project in front of me here with some drums recorded with multiple microphones. So I want to quickly pan some of these to get a wider stereo image. Now, of course I can use the pan knob on any track or I can select a few of them and pan them together. But this option could be a bit slow. Instead, let's open the action list, look for SWS, pan selected tracks, and we see these actions right here. I'm gonna assign some shortcuts for these. So let's take the first one, pan selected tracks to left, and I'm gonna add a shortcut here and use command and I. Then for the same action for panning right, I'll use Command and O. These two buttons are next to each other, which is why I chose them to run similar actions. Now I will hold Control on the PC, Command on the Mac, and select my hi-hat, my hi-hat side overhead track, and the hi-hat side of my room mics. Hit Command and I, and they are panned hard left. I can then select the right side of my drums and hit Command and O, to pan them to the right. We also have these commands to pan tracks symmetrically from left to right or right to left. So I'll assign them to command option and I and O respectively. So I can come down here to these backing vocal tracks, hit command option and I, and now they are panned symmetrically from right to left. This action will automatically scale the pan positions based on the number of tracks. 
so no matter how many tracks you select, they will always be spaced out evenly, from hard left to center to hard right or vice versa. Doing this manually and accurately is very time consuming, so taking the time to set hotkeys to these can be a huge time saver in the long run. Further ahead in my mix, after setting basic levels and pans, I will usually start with some basic plugins, like an EQ and compressor, the salt and pepper of audio production, and maybe a little bit of saturation, which is maybe the hot sauce. I can go to my effects browser, select Kakos from the developers tab, find Rhea EQ, right click, and choose add to select the tracks. Let's do the same thing for Rhea Comp, right click, add to select the tracks. And finally, let's choose the JS tab from the top here, look for JS saturation, and once again, right click, add to selected tracks. So now that I have these plugins on my tracks, I can click on the effects button to open them, and from the effects window, choose whichever one I want and get to work. But once again, there's a cool set of SWS actions that can help us navigate through our plugins on the fly. Open the action list and look for SWS toggle float. And we can see these eight actions. With these, I can float plugins one to eight on one or any number of selected tracks. I have set these to option F1 to F8 respectively. So I can select any track, hold option, and I can hit F1, F2, or F3 to float my EQ compressor, and saturation plugins. Hit the same keys again and you can hide them. If you work with project templates, you can set it up so your favorite EQs, compressors, or any other plugins that you use are selected on the same effects slot, which makes these shortcuts even more handy. I can also select multiple tracks and hit the same hotkeys to see their corresponding plugins side by side. This is very useful, for example, when we want to EQ certain elements in our mix in a complementary way, cutting certain bands from one to leave space for the other and vice versa. I can select these two guitar tracks, for example. Let's hear them together. So we can hear some frequencies here that clash. So let's see what we can do with some EQing. With both tracks selected, I'll hit Option and F1 to float their EQ plugins side by side. And now I can EQ each one while referencing the other. This next action is just a handy modification of the Reaper interface, which you may find useful if you record yourself in Reaper. By default, I can arm any track in my project and then hit record to begin recording. I wanted a way to find out if I'm still rolling at a quick glance. So once again, open the action list and look for toggle ruler red while recording. This action has a state in front of it which is currently off, but I can highlight it, choose run from the bottom here, and this will set the state of this action to on. So now, whenever I am recording, my ruler up here turns red, which is very useful because I can be on the other side of the room behind the drum kit or have the Reaper window minimized on my second screen. And still, a quick glance at Reaper will show me whether I am rolling or not. So with this off, when we record, the only indication that I'm rolling is the word recording on my transport bar here. But if I turn this on, the ruler turns red and we can easily see this from any distance. This is a small, purely cosmetic change, but I included it here to demonstrate to you that SWS is not only full of complex add-ons, but also lots of small tweaks that together add up to make your life easier while using Reaper. So as we can see, there are endless possibilities for workflow improvements using SWS, and its true power is unlocked 
when you then assign shortcuts to these, make custom actions in which you can mix and match default Reaper hotkeys and SWS commands, not to mention all the incredibly complex features that you can find in the extensions menu here. So I highly recommend you download and use it, read through the manual, and have a look through the actions yourself so you can find out which of these work best for you. And once again, please donate to Standing Water Studios if you like the work they do. If you want to learn about more of these SWS features and actions, you can visit my channel where I have covered a lot of these in detail. And Kenny himself also has a course on the channel Groove 3 that covers SWS. That's going to be it from me today. A huge thanks to the one and only Kenny Joya for having me on Reaper Mania. To think that just two years ago, I was watching Reaper Mania and the Reaper blog to learn to use this DAW for the first time. And now I am making my own video on this channel is truly a surreal dream for me. I wanted to thank Kenny for the incredible value that your tutorials add to what is already one of the best DAWs in the market. We always learn something, we always use it, and we can never wait to see you next time. Thanks.